parts overview. With the NS1000, we start off with a motor base, which is attached to the machine by what we refer to as the reservoir. Now inside we have a plastic washer. We also have a plastic bowl with a screen filter. Um, now the juicing blade attaches inside, and we tighten this down by use of this thing right here. And here we have the juicer lid, which you may notice has an oval-shaped opening in the top. This is for inserting the food pusher, which goes in so. We also have the pulp container for auto-pulp ejection. Juicer is set up and use. Assembly begins by first taking the center base, lining it up properly with the grooves in the motor base. Uh, place it right on top. And make sure, though, that the front stud is facing out of the concave area in the front. Secondly, we take the plastic washer, place it right on top of the center screw located on the motor base as well. This is followed by the filter screen bowl, um, which is a very simple process. Place it very carefully on top of the center screw, line it up so it fits firmly. There's no reason whatsoever to use force or pressure. It's a very, very simple thing to set up. Next, we place it on the blade disc. This goes on the same as any other screw or nut. Place it on top of the center screw, turn it clockwise until it's fairly tight. Now you can tighten this down with your hands. Usually that's very ample. If you do have a weak wrist or finger problem, you can use the screw we provide to tighten it down extra tight. There's really no need this normally. Uh, next, we take the top lid. This is a plastic bit in the back, facing towards the rear, away from the front spout. Next, we simply screw the top on, pull the handle right up from back to front. Very simple operation. Lastly, we have the residue container, which fits directly underneath the back of the machine. You're ready to go. Now, important thing to remember is the blade disc always goes in the dulcer screen bowl. Now, every once in a while, we get somebody who gets the instructions and tends to take the blade disc and put it directly on the spindle. Now, if you do do this, don't panic. This isn't a big problem. But once it's screwed down, you will find out the center console does not come off. And if you just turn it, the spindle turns as well and the blade doesn't come off. What you have to do is take your fingers, carefully put them under the disc blade or on the spindle. Then you'll find that it unscrews right away. This is not a problem. Okay, now that we've assembled your unit, why don't we show you how to use it. I'd like to start off by showing you how to make some carrot juice. Um, but let me give you a pointer first. No matter what fruit and vegetable you're using, it's a lot easier to make juices. If you take a carrot and cut it lengthwise. This way it fits into the juicer better and comes out a lot faster. Just stick these babies down and in. I think two carrots should be about plain. Watch your fingers, don't stick it down the hole. That's what the plunger is for. Down and in they go. And for the last few to do the plunger, stick it in. And there we go. Full glass of juice. This thing is so easy. Alright, we're taking celery, which is a long fiber vegetable. If okay, you're any long fiber fruit or vegetable, if you're making mixed juices, be sure to put these in last. So occasionally there's a tendency for the long fiber to get stuck in the filter screen bowl. And this doesn't happen very often, don't worry about it. Just make sure you put the long fibers in last and you'll be fine. Now occasionally, if you're using the juicer for a while, you might notice that the amount coming out is less and less. Now don't worry about that. What usually happens is you get little bits of peel or seeds stuck inside the strainer. Um, now, this isn't a big problem at all. Just grab some lemon juice, a little bit of white vinegar, and a good old toothbrush, toothbrush. Scrub it a bit, it comes out just as good as new. It's not a problem at all. Now, for those of you who will be using the unit for commercial purposes, here's a good hint. Occasionally, you might not want to use the residual container in the back. You can use a plastic bag, which holds a lot more excess discharge. Now, the way to install this is to remove the hood in the back. Make sure you pull it up evenly in the back. It pops right out, no problem whatsoever. And simply under the handle, Pop it down in the back and take the plastic bag. Open it up. Make sure the bottom of the bag goes underneath the handle. And insert it under the ridge and over the top. Now the top of the bag should cross over the two grooves to secure the handle. So the handle is what's going to hold the bag in place. So simply pull the handle up. Pop. There we go. Turn on the machine. And it should go right with air. And you got hours of use. Now I'll throw some carrots in here. Okay. You pop out the plunger, stick in some carrots. Here's one last suggestion for you. After you've cleaned and reassembled the unit, I would suggest you turn on the power, like such, for about six or seven seconds. This will allow any excess moisture that may be inside the unit to dissipate. Okay, and that should be plenty of time. Well, that'll pretty much end the instructional part of our little video. Now, I hope you're all clear on how to use your NS1000 juicer from Nutrisource. Uh, from all of us at Back to Basics, thank you very much, and we hope you enjoy it.